The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this Nadex webinar. Today, we've got a, a guest presenter, uh, a friend of mine, Dan Passarelli. He is a great educator, uh, particularly in the options space. And I really want to thank Dan uh, from MakerTaker.com. Uh, uh, market Taker. Oh, Market, what did I say? Maker Market Taker. I apologize. I misspoke. Market <laughs> taker.com. I do want to thank Dan for um, joining us today and going over the topic going long or short oil with Nadex binary options. Um, so with that, uh, <laughs> Dan, I apologize. Sometimes it's just <laughs> you, the brain's wired a certain way. So uh, mm -hmm. without further ado, Dan Passarelli from markettaker.com on trading oil, the price of oil, with Nadex binaries. And at the end, I will come back and I'm gonna do a quick brief demo to review what, what Dan went and actually show you um, some of that on the Nadex platform. So Dan, it's, it's all yours. All right, well, uh, thank you uh, very, very much, Todd. I appreciate this. Um, we, let's see, everyone can see my screen, I presume. Oh yes, I see that, great. So um, we are going to talk today about something that I think is going to be of interest to a lot of people, going long or short oil with Nadex binary options. Uh, oil has been in the news quite a bit lately. <clears throat> Pretty darn interesting stuff has been happening, like literally historical moves. Uh, and that's not like, you know, when you're watching the TV or, or reading an article and they say historical and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, historical. No, literally historical, negative oil prices. So uh, really, really interesting things happening. Now, before we get started, I need to point out that um, uh, options are not for everyone, past performance doesn't indicate future results, and just apply a little bit of common sense to everything that I'm saying. I'm not guaranteeing anything, uh, no guarantees in the market but I am gonna give you some really, really great information that's gonna help you a lot. And speaking of really, really great information, I wanna give everybody just a little bit of a gift here. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to say, you know, I know with this current market volatility, it's tough trading out there for many traders these days and, and, and we can help. I created a simple checklist for the top five strategies to use in volatile markets to make it easier to know which strategies to use, when, and have your go-to strategies down pat for whatever the market throws at you. It's a free download. Just go to markettaker.com slash five, the number five. That's markettaker.com slash five, as you can see right here on the screen. Uh, it's really short, won't take you long to read but uh, really, really compact with some very useful information for trading volatile markets. Again, just go to markettaker.com slash five. All right, now when you trade, there's three parts to every trade. There's the setup, there's the trade construction, and there's the risk management. So what I mean by that is, if you're analyzing a, a chart, what we call a chart of um, whether it's stocks or oil or currency or, or whatever it is, <clears throat> you know, that's basically like a graph of the prices. If you're looking at one of these charts and uh, however advanced in, in what we call technical analysis you are, you look at it and you believe that that asset will go up or that asset will go down or it'll stay in a pattern or whatever it is you feel of a trade is setting up, then your next step is to construct a trade that, that best makes money if you're right and protects you the most if you're wrong. Trade construction is something that a lot of people don't think about. A lot of novice traders will just go in and buy a stock or a future or an ETF uh that you know if they're wrong they can run into big trouble um there's been many people who ran into big trouble with the uso etf 
There was talk about that delisting a couple of weeks ago. It didn't happen, but there was talk about it. Futures, there were people who got long because they were really, really cheap and they went negative. Uh, pretty crazy. People didn't know that that could happen. Um, you know, in hindsight, people should have, but um, it was very, very easy for most people to, to not realize that that could happen. People ended up losing a lot of money because of that. And, and, and why? Like big picture, why? Because they didn't really construct the trade as well as possible because they got long something that went really, really, really far against them and caused them to lose a lot of money. Trade construction, so important. But then after that, it's risk management. <clears throat> there are so many people who might get into a trade and it goes against them and they really aren't sure what to do and they think about it after the fact without ha really having a plan and make bad emotional decisions. So these three things, trade setup, trade construction and risk management are all so important and, and they're really the, the elements to any good trade. So I wanna pose a question to you. What if trade setup, trade construction, and risk management were all packaged within a single trading instrument? Well, guess what? They actually are. They are with Nadex binary options. So I wanna talk about how to use binary options for setup, trade construction, and risk management. And I'm gonna work through a rather simple example, but just because it's simple doesn't mean it's not practical. It's very practical and I look at most, if not all of my trades in the ex from the exact same lens that I'm gonna share with you right now, support and resistance. Now, for those of you who are a little bit newer to trading and uh, reading a chart of something, Support and resistance is probably the simplest and most common and most useful tool that you have at your disposal. And it's very, very simple. Support is, a, is when I'm looking at a chart, it's a price at which the market, whichever market we're looking at, hit a bottom price two or more times and then subsequently bounced higher. It's basically just drawing a line between two low points, but don't let that simplicity fool you. It's not the line on the chart that's the magic. It's what that line represents that's important. If a, if a stock or a future or a currency or whatever asset we're talking about, falls to a certain price and then bounces higher, and then at some point falls to that price again and bounces higher, we have to ask ourselves, why does that happen? Well, why does any asset gain in price? Try and remember this from high school economics. When you were sleeping in class, uh, maybe it sort of seeped in through your ear and you dreamt about it later. Um, why does any asset price go up. It's because there's demand created because that's where buyers are and buyers buy that stuff from the sellers. And then the sellers raise their prices if the buyers want more. And if buyers really want more because there's more demand, then they'll buy that from the sellers and consequently force the price higher. Support is simply a map of where the buyers were in the past. And the way trading works these days is at its highest level, it's not random. It's not people saying, oh, gee whiz, I think I'll buy it here. It's very, very sophisticated traders who program computers to, to run these very sophisticated mathematical models that say, hey, at this price, you know, this is what this asset is worth. If it goes too far below that price, I'm going to buy it. When it goes too far above that price, that's where I'm going to sell it. And that's why we see these things on a chart. Now, speaking of selling it, we have that same scenario with resistance. Resistance is just the mirror image of support. 
It's a price at which the market topped out two or more times. It is a map of where the sellers were in the past. <coughs> now, does that mean that these places are where the buyers and sellers will be in the future? No, not guaranteed, but we very frequently see support and resistance hold, meaning that if it bounced there in the past, it's more likely than not that it will bounce there again in the future. Now, not always, but that is something that, that we can use as, as a potential indication. For example, if we were playing a game where we flip a coin and you know there was a little piece of gum or something stuck on the tails side of the coin, and, and therefore we knew that tails you know, like that, that that heads would come up a little bit more often as a, as a result of that, because the tail side is heavier. You know, it's not guaranteed that the tail side will never come up, but it's more likely that the head side will come up. Wouldn't you love to play a game with someone for even money to bet on heads over and over again because the odds are in your favor? Well, that's exactly what we're doing here with support and resistance. Many people use support and resistance to set up trades. It's one of the most time-tested technical tools that exist. If you know that that's where the buyers or sellers orders have been in the past, you can trade off that information. And, and this is what I was talking about. This is how this looks. You know, we simply draw a support line that connects some low prices here, here, and even here. We can draw a line that connects some top level prices to illustrate resistance. We can do the same here, the same here, and the same here, and the same here. <clears throat> now, what happens if support or resistance does not hold? Because that will happen sometimes. When that happens, we often see what we call a breakout, and sometimes it can be a pretty violent follow through. Like we see here, we had resistance, but then when this, when this, whatever this was, I think this happened to be the US 500, broke through resistance, it took out all the sellers, all those sell orders that were potentially sitting there from maybe a institutional player's mathematical model or something like that. It took those all out, so there was nothing holding it down. The supply sort of disappeared. And so that's a great potential way to play a breakout what we call a breakout, which is maybe a bigger move. We can play it either way, but always playing, we're always playing will it hold or will it break? So back to binary options, they help us in every step of the trade potentially. In the setup, if we're expecting support or resistance to hold, or maybe even break, in trade construction, we have a very simple way to trade support and resistance. And in risk management, we have limited loss, which is very, very important and easy, excuse me, to manage trade. So let's just look at a couple simple examples here. <coughs> this is a one minute chart of, of uh, oil, crude oil. Now by one minute, I mean like you can see like there's some, I mean, they're kind of crunched together a little bit here, but there's some red vertical lines, and then there's some green vertical lines, red and green vertical lines, and the green ones basically are up, and the red ones basically are down. And each one of those lines represents the range that it traded within a one-minute period. Okay? <clears throat> now, this is over a series, like those one-minute candles, we call them those one minute candles, they go over a series of about, oh, about what is this? Uh, one, two, three, four, four or five days or something like that. Now we can draw support. Now I'm just kind of eyeballing some support here. We actually went through the support here, but it kind of consolidated here, uh, kind of consolidated here. We went through it, but kind of consolidated here. And we got a little bit of a bounce around it here. This is not necessarily the best support line. I'm going to show you some better ones in a moment, but I just want to show you our first introductory example. <clears throat> Let's say we thought for whatever reason, maybe it's for sport, maybe it's for some other reason, 
that crude will not fall below $23.75 a barrel. That's this line, $23.75 a barrel. What we can do is we can buy a binary option. Now, what does binary mean? It means there's two potential outcomes, right? Like people talk about a binary event, either you win or you lose, either it's up or it's down, either it's whatever, fill in the blanks. Binary means it can be one of two things. So, oops, yep, getting ahead of myself, literally. So I can buy this binary option, meaning if, if I'm buying the binary, if the price is above 23.75, this line, I get a hundred bucks. If it's below 23.75, whatever I pay, I lose. So here I can pay $76.50. Now I stand to get a hundred bucks. I'm paying $76.50. So that means I can make $23.50. If it goes below 23.75, I lose that $76.50. Now, at first, that might seem a little bit imbalanced. Wait, so my max profit is 23.50, but my max loss is 76.50? I don't like that, but but you might like that because, gosh darn it, you might like that because <clears throat> we're it's already in this example trading at $24 and uh, rounded to four cents. We've got a head start in this working for us, the odds are in our favor. If it goes up, we win. If it stays the same, we win. If it goes down a little bit, we win. Only if it goes down too much. Now, I wanna use a really, really good example here. This is the exact same chart, the crude oil one minute chart, but I'm using some actual real resistance here. We got to a top here, we got to a top here, we got to a top here, we kind of flirted with the top here. We know that there's been some sell orders here. How do we know that? Because the market went down, people had to sell it for it to go down. And we're pretty far away from that price of $24.75 in this example. Took these screenshots a few days ago. So what we can do here is we can sell this binary option. In this case, collect $16.50. <clears throat> so if we're selling it, that means as long as it stays below this price of $24.75, we win and we get to and we get to keep that $16.50 that we collected. If it's above 24.75, first of all, it has to rally quite a bit percentage-wise, and it has to break through where the sell orders are. So arguably, there's a lot of things on our side here. The odds are strikingly in our favor, not guaranteed, but strikingly in our favor. And so this is a position that many traders might be interested in, in taking. And the best part of this, we've seen extremely violent moves in oil. Can, you know, can oil break through resistance and rally above this? Of course it can. Could it potentially be an extremely violent rally? You know, something like, I don't know, China comes out and says it's, you know, drilled a gigantic hole in some mountain and can store a gazillion barrels of oil and they're buying everything they can at these low levels. You know, seems a little crazy, but is it not possible? If you believe that's not possible, you gotta start watching the news because there's way crazier things than that going on right now. It is, it is possible for the price of oil to zip up to 30 bucks a barrel maybe. If we shorted this with a future, we'd stand to lose a lot but trading it with limited risk that binary options extends us naturally manages our risk, naturally gives us a better setup, naturally gives us a better trade construction. Now, those were one minute candles. 
We can also look at 15 minute candles. We can look at, there's many, many different choices of, of how we can look at one of these charts. Now, this is a little bit more of an aggressive scenario. Here, looking at these 15 minute candles, <clears throat> we're actually looking at the exact Actually, it's not a more aggressive scenario. We're actually looking at the exact same chart, but just on what we call a different time frame, right? If you're taking notes, write that down, down time frame. Instead of each candle representing one minute periods, here each candle represents 15 minute periods. Instead of four or five days, we're talking several days here from, uh, what was this, maybe about a week or so. So, it's at the same line here, 2475, and we might consider selling this contract, again, you know, about 1575 or whatever it turns out to be exactly, and uh, construct a very similar trade. Now, I wanna show you a somewhat different way that we can approach this. We have resistance here. Now, many people might be looking at this, and actually, I didn't even look at uh, crude uh, this morning to see where it's trading. But some people might be looking at a chart like this and they might say, hey, you know what? I don't believe that that resistance is going to hold. I'm taking, I would take the other side of this bet that the speaker is talking about. I believe that it, that it will bust out above that resistance point. And I don't like those, that, that payout structure. I don't like risking 85 to make 15, great. That's why it's a market because there are a lot of differing opinions and some people are right and some people are wrong and nobody's always right and nobody's always wrong and your research might be better than someone else's. So instead of selling this binary at this resistance level, Someone who believes that that resistance level won't hold, that it will break out, again, write that down if you're taking notes, <clears throat> that it will go above 2475 can just simply buy this binary option. And here, if you were looking at that previous chart and not really liking those odds, then you're gonna love these odds. Here we might buy these at, and the price changed by the way, uh, since uh, I took the other screenshot. I might buy these at 27.75, so I'm only risking about 27.75-ish, and I can make 71.50 if I'm right, right? So here I'm basically risking one to make three. Now, oil has to move quite a bit higher, and it has to break through where the sellers statistically have been in the past, historically have been in the past, but many people will play these breakouts. And this is a very, very simple and extremely low risk way of playing it. We've seen negative oil prices. Who here is really, really excited about buying oil futures right now, right? You might think it's going to go up, but wouldn't you rather have a safer way to do it. You might think you're risking 24.75 if you buy a future, but in fact, you're potentially risking a lot more if the prices were to go negative again. But here, we're only risking 28 bucks for each contract we decide to buy. So when using support and resistance, this is, a, this is really important what you're trading. Will it hold or will it break? Why complicate it? It's really, really simple. So all that being said, um, these are volatile markets and I hope that what I shared with you today, excuse me, gives you one idea on how you can trade volatile markets in a safer way and be able to manage your trades much better. And this is yet another way uh, another thing that I can share with you to help you navigate these volatile markets. You can download this checklist, the five strategies for volatile markets checklist by simply going to markettaker.com slash five. And Todd, do we have some questions from the audience? 
actually what we're going to do, and, and I would really like to uh, thank Dan again for joining us, markettaker.com. What I would like to do now is, you know, this is a, the way I like to think of this, this is a great recipe, right? We get a recipe, but then when you want to go actually go and cook, uh, maybe you're not so terribly comfortable in the kitchen. And so I just want to do a quick little um, demonstration of looking at this in action on the Nadex platform. So if you just stick around for a few more minutes, uh, I wanna kind of just show you. Uh, my mom is from the great state of Missouri, the show me state. Uh, so I'd like to show you. You should be seeing my screen right now. And I am going to log on or log in to the Nadex platform. And I am going to use, you'll notice it says join the beta up here. I would like to show you, this is, it's not really beta. It's our new platform. It's gonna become the standard. We do sessions and tutorials on the platform. If you go to uh, the Nadex website, you'll find um, uh, plenty of resources out there. Uh, and actually, oh, this is really rather interesting. By the way, you'll notice uh, economic events. Uh, we've we've launched some new economic binaries. So the same principles that apply to what Dan just talked about uh, in regards to oil, uh, this this works for other products as well. And I just wanted to mention that if you were interested in our event contracts, jobless claims, non-farm payroll, GDP, if you're curious about what any, what any of that is, in an hour and a half, my colleague, uh, Adam McCaden, who's head of our product, is actually going to be doing another webinar today. So uh, if you've got time at 1 p.m. Central, so 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, sign back in, go back to uh, the Nadex website and you can join Adam as he goes over event contracts. But uh, a quick little recap, um, we are talking about binary options and you'll notice that's in the upper left-hand corner. And for oil, you're gonna find that under our commodities. So when I click on commodities, you'll notice we've got a different time frames and and Dan mentioned time frames you're gonna have time frames on your chart you're gonna have time time frames for your predictions do I think something is going to happen short term if you want lots of price action this contract here ends in 31 minutes uh, and you're going to see some pretty volatile swings um, I mean here let's just take a look at this right now I'm gonna pick this 2542 level when I click on that it brings up the chart all right, and uh, here, here, here we have a, a chart of oil, and we're looking in a in a, in a very short time frame. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and make this a one minute. Let's even make this shorter. And uh, right here uh, on the, you can see the indicative price of oil right now is twenty five thirty nine, twenty five forty, and this binary is 2542 it's right at the money what's going to happen there's a 50 50 probability of it finishing above 2542 uh so you know if you wanted to take a short-term play on oil uh that is limited risk limited reward you see i mean the, the probability the market price is the probability of this happening um it's right in the middle here right at 50 percent we're trading right at 2542. This is the 2542 contract in the next 30 minutes. If you thought oil was going to, in the next 30 minutes, finish a little higher, you could buy one of these. And notice how oil keeps ticking higher and the price uh, goes up. And you know before you get into the trade, here, actually, look at this here. I'm going to click 2553. If I were to buy one here, I know exactly what I'm risking. I, I can't lose more than I paid. And if it does finish above 2542, the contract settles at 100. I end up making 46.75 in the next 35 minutes, uh, and that's for a one lot. If I thought oil was not going to go higher, so you, you thought it was going to uh, drop lower through the end of the uh, through the next 30 minutes, you could sell one. And notice how the chart tells you where oil would need to be for you to either make a profit or not. So if I sold one, I need oil to be in that red zone at the end for this contract to go to 100. If I were to buy it, I would need oil to finish in the blue zone up higher 
for this contract to settle at 100. And this is a way, and this is a very short-term contract, 30-minute contracts. Uh, if you want some some price action, that's one way to go. Uh, but if you you know wanted to have a, a little bit longer term, there are weekly contracts in oil, and you could take a, a, a a perspective on oil and then at, every week you can roll your your opinion uh, the one thing I do want to mention is even though these contracts settle at zero or at a hundred you don't have to wait until expiration to see what happens uh, you can always trade out of a position early uh, to limit your losses or to lock in gains so for instance if I were to buy one of these um, uh, here uh, say at 50.75, and somehow oil rallied up and it went up to you know a little higher here above 25.42, and the probability that the market prices it changes to 65 or 70, I could always sell it and take a profit. Uh, on the same token, if I bought one and look at if I bought one here and oil kept going lower, I don't have to watch it go to zero. If it drops down to 30 or 25 and I just want to say, listen, I was wrong, uh, but I don't want to lose all $50, you can always sell out of it early. So just because there's an expiration associated with the contract does not mean you need to wait till expiration to see what happens and the fact that you can do you can take a position on the price of oil whether it's going up or whether it's going down and you can do so in a very defined risk defined reward environment where you know there have been some pretty volatile swings you know you're protected you know you're protected and so again you know it's a, it's a great way for you to uh, trade around your opinion on what's going to happen to the price of oil. If you think it's going up, you buy a binary. If you think it's going down, you sell it. And you know go, getting in exactly what your potential risk reward is. Um, getting into it. And so you know and you're setting up that trade, just as Dan had mentioned, is, is setting up that trade. And, and, and knowing well ahead of time what your potential risks and what your potential rewards are. Uh, with that, uh, I want to thank you for joining us today. I want to thank Dan again uh, for running this session. This was recorded. It will be available on our YouTube channel as well as our website. Uh, and uh, remember, go to nadex.com. In fact, you know what? I, I'm just going to show you real quickly. If you go to our webinar section, You'll find out, I mean, here's to the session right now, but here's trading economic events. Please join us. Uh, love to have you. And again, I would like to thank Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring, markettaker.com. Uh, I know if you want to reach out to him, uh, if you'd like to catch up with Dan, uh, his email is dan at markettaker.com. And with that, hopefully we'll have you at some further webinars. And I want to wish you all good luck in the markets.